from Crunch Econometrics. Thank you for joining me. Today we shall be looking at how to identify, respecify, and estimate a model having structural break in EVUs using the Chow test. So what is a structural break? This is when an event has affected the trend of a particular series, or when movement in a particular series is distorted or truncated, or when there is a visible difference between the past and future movements in a particular series. So how can structural breaks be detected in a series? You can detect it exogenously when you know the break dates, and you can also detect it endogenously using any scientific testing if you don't know the dates of the breaks. So can structural breaks be modeled and estimated? Yes. So using the child test, it requires that you know the break date. And how can you know that? You have to plot the graph of the series and you can observe the sharp change in the trend of the series. You can also plot the kusum. It's like walking backwards, but it works. You can easily see when the kusum plot digresses from the 5% statistical significance boundary. When you are using the child test, it is the F statistics that tells you whether there is a break or not, or whether that break is significant or not. If the F statistic is significant, then the null hypothesis of no break point is rejected. But if the F statistic is not significant, then we fail to reject the null hypothesis of no break point in that situation. The child test can also be computed manually, but I rather allow the software to do its work. How can structural break be detected using child test? in views, Like I said earlier on, plot the graph of the series to identify the breakpoints. Number two, run the initial first regression. Number three, go ahead to perform the child breakpoint test by now imputing the break dates in the estimation. Observe the value of the F statistic. If it is significant, then go ahead to reject the null hypothesis of no break. You can further verify by taking the plot of the Kusum squared and see that the plot deviates out of the 5% significance level boundary. So having observed there's a break in your data, how can you respecify and estimate such a model? Number one, you have to create a dummy variable which takes zero for years without the break and one from the break point here. Then go ahead to generate new series with a dummy variable for all the regressors in the model. You can see the way I've specified the new dummies we are going to generate with the regressors. Now run the second regression with all the regressors and the newly generated series, including that of the dummy variable and interaction terms. Again, you can see the specification here. Interpret the results as you would in any model. Now plot the Kusum graph and you will see that the plot stays within a 5% significance level boundary, indicating that your model is stable. You can now go ahead to test for any diagnostics of your choosing. So having given this preamble, let us now take an example using the child test in AVUS. My data as a group, the year you can see from 1980, I have data up to 2015 over here. The three variables you can see, Gini, domestic credit, and secondary education. In this tutorial, we are simply going to test for structural break in the series. I'll save it now with a new name. I'll save it as child test. You can use any name that you want. I said it earlier that by plotting the graph of a series, you can easily see when there is a sharp change in the trend of that series. So I'm going to plot the graph of the Gini index, which is my dependent variable. And let us see if there's a change. So here you can see the plot of the Gini index. And here you can see a noticeable sharp change from the trend at exactly year 30. At year 30, the Gini index takes a sharp change. You can see. So this is where the break occurred. The date of the break point is very important because that is what will be imputed into the child test when we are doing our analysis. So the second thing we have to do is to run our initial regression. So we go to quick, click on estimate equation. Now list all your variables. The estimation method is ordinary least squares, so that remains unchanged. We click OK. So here we have the results from the first regression. Let us check for the stability of this model. Go to View, click on Stability Diagnostics, 
and select recursive estimates. Now select Kusum of squares test. Okay. From the Kusum of squares test, you can see there's a digression out of the 5% significance level boundary. So this one tells you there's a break in your model. So this is another evidence to show there is a break in the model. There's a sharp deviation from the 5% boundary. So this model is not stable due to the break. So having seen from the Kusum plot that there is a deviation from the 5% significance level, let us now go ahead to perform the child test. To do that, go to view, click on stability diagnostics and select child breakpoint test. From the plot of the graph, we observe that the deviation took place at year 30. So in this plot, I'm going to type in 30. That is a breakpoint date. It occurred at year 30. I click OK. So here's the result, child breakpoint test. You can see 30 here, that is a breakpoint date. The null hypothesis we are testing is that there are no breaks at the specified breakpoints. And what is the decision criteria? When the value of the F statistic is significant, the null hypothesis is rejected. And that is what we are doing here. So the next thing to do is to respecify the model and estimate it. To respecify the model, the first thing I have to do is to generate a dummy variable that takes zero for years before the break and one from the breakpoint year onwards. So on the screen, you can see I've created a dummy variable that takes zero from year one to year 29 and one from year 30 when the break occurred to year 36. Remember, I have 36 years data that is from 1980 to 2015. So this is the dummy variable. Having created the dummy variable, the second step will be to interact the dummy variable with the two regressors I have in the model. This is the interaction with the domestic credit variable I have. Here it is. So you can see again from zero, from year zero to year 29, that is zero. While from year 30 to the end, there are variables there. That is multiplying one by the value of domestic credits. So the same thing was done for the second regressor secondary education you can see it right here so you generate a dummy variable and interact it with the number of regressors that you have in your model so let us go now to estimate this second equation i go to quick estimate equation and i list all the variables now including the dummy variable and the interaction terms so you can see here that the re-specification includes now the dummy variable and the two interaction terms. Estimation technique is still E squares. I click OK. So let's check for stability of this model and see what the Kusum plot will look like. I go to view, stability diagnostics. I select recursive estimates. Kusum of squares test. Click that. OK. Now you can see that the model is stable. It lies within the 5% significance level boundary. So the structural break in the model has been conveniently taken care of. So you can go ahead to interpret your results. These are OLS estimates, so simply give you the Ceteris Paribas interpretation. Afterwards, you can go ahead to test for any diagnostics of your choice. I hope this tutorial has been helpful. If I was too fast, you can always play back and just do exactly as I've done. Again, thank you for watching our videos. We hope to see you next time on our subsequent tutorials.